We'll start this tutorial on the Core Shoaling Analysis Tool, CSAT, homepage provided by the Coastal Inlets, Inlets Research Program. There are two sets of instructions, one for CoreNet users and one for all other users. For both cases, you'll need to open up a Windows command prompt to verify the version of Anaconda in Python on your machine. So type in Anaconda space dash dash version and hit enter. I currently have Anaconda on my machine, but if you do not, you'll need to go to step two. For Cornet users, go to step two and go to the app portal and follow the instructions to download Anaconda. If you are not a Cornet user, then you'll be going to the anaconda.com distribution page and follow the instructions to get Anaconda on your machine. Once you have Anaconda on your machine or that you verify that you have a version, go ahead and type Python dash dash version see what Python version you have. I currently have an updated version of Python 3.7. If you have a version that's less than 3.7, such as 3.6, or you have Python 2. Point whatever, then you're going to need to go to step two. Uh, for Cornet users, you'll have to go to the portal and download Anaconda 3.7. And for all other users, you'll have to go to the main Anaconda page and download Anaconda 3.7. Once you have Anaconda 3.7, go ahead and uh, download the csat.py showing analysis tool by clicking here and save. It'll immediately go to your downloads folder and you can move this zip file wherever you'd like. For this tutorial, I'll be moving it to a folder on my desktop called csat demo. Paste the zip file in the folder that you'd like Right click the zip file and we need to extract this. Go to 7-zip and extract here. CSAT distribution is what's extracted. Go ahead and go into this folder and note of the contents that are in it. Go ahead and minimize it. Now we're going to need to get data for the CSAT tool to run. Go ahead and open up the RDE drive pub. and click on the CSAT input. To download the zip file for whatever district that you would like to run, click the box next, next to the zip file. For this tutorial, we'll use uh, Chicago Lake, Great Lakes region and click download. This again will go to your downloads folder and will need to be moved. So right click, cut, Go back to where your CSAT distribution folder is located, and this will need to go into the data folder. If the data is not in the data folder, the code will not run and it will have no data to process. Right click, 7-zip, extract here. You can go in here and look at the contents. This is all the net CDF files for every single reach with all the historical survey data in your district. Go back up to CSAT distribution and right click on CSAT underscore batch dot bat. This is the batch file that's going to be running, uh, that's going to be running the analysis tool. Go ahead and edit. And you can open this up in any editor that you'd like. And for this tutorial, we'll be, I'll be using Notepad. The data that you're running must match the district name environment variable. So this is a Buffalo C L R B, which needs to get changed to C for the Chicago district. Lines four through seven, which we'll be going through in another tutorial, deal with specifying a start date and end date. But three, line three is the only line that you need to change. Go ahead and save the batch file, make sure you save it, and you can go ahead and minimize it. Back up to CSAT distribution and double click the CSAT batch dot bat code to run the code. Once the code is running, is going through each NetCDF file, reading the historical survey data, and outputting uh, data analysis CSV files in the output folder. Go into the district folder. This is the start date and end date of the historical surveys. Each reach will have five different files producing uh, spatial summary showing statistics. 
I'll go through each file. The average min and max is a 10 foot by 10 foot shoaling rates at every single grade point. So this is giving you an X and a Y within the shoal, within the, the reach. And you'll have an average, max, min, the last height, the amount of surveys for that grade point, and some standard deviations. You'll also have a survey pair overlap CSV tool. And this is for QC purposes to ensure there's sufficient overlap between surveys. So we see high amounts of, high percentage of overlap. The next CSV file specific to the reach will be a survey pair, pair volume differences. This provides the elevation differences between two surveys. This would, is useful if we're looking for uh, an episodic event. Surveys not used is the table. We'll go ahead and open it. It's pretty self-explanatory. And here, there were no surveys that weren't used. So this often can be will be a blank table. The last output file that I want to go through is the volumes.csv file. This file shows the amount of cubic yards that would need to be dredged to get to the depth depicted in column A. And it steps at every six months based on the shilling rates for that reach. So to get the reach to, let's say, 20 feet, two years from now, that amount would need to be dredged. At this point, the code is run and the process is complete.